So what were his traits like? What was his demeanor like, alayhi salatu wasalam? So we already said his smile was constant and he's described as basaman bahakan. He was always smiling and causing others to smile and he was always laughing and causing others to laugh. But his laughter, alayhi salatu wasalam, was also dignified and shy. When he would laugh, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, all that really was, was an extremely wide smile. And he would laugh in a way that his smile would open up to where you could see the back of his teeth, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And even when he chose to laugh, alayhi salatu wasallam, says something about him. So he would laugh when others would laugh, but he also would laugh, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, widening his smile when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him good news. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentions the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam having that wide smile, that laughter after his ibadah, after his worship. He would laugh when he shared narrations about Allah's mercy, the famous narration about the man who would enter paradise last. And he would think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mocking him because he cannot comprehend the generosity and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu laughs and says, Allah laughed at that man when the man said, Ya Allah, are you making fun of me? And you are the Lord of the worlds. So his laugh was not audible, but it was clearly distinct from his usual smile sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it would show his back teeth. The Prophet ﷺ also was noted for these long periods of silence. You know, sometimes when a person is eloquent, powerful, beautiful, whatever it may be, they tend to dominate every single gathering. They tend to dominate every single conversation. This is the Messenger of Allah wasallam, and he's noted for his silence. He was always in this place of reflection. And you could tell when you were looking at him wasallam, that he was deeply perceptive. And when he sat around people, he would only speak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a way that was proportionate to the gathering itself. He's also described as having hulwul mantiq, beautiful logic and coherence. He spoke and he spoke to the point. As we said, his articulation was crisp and he would speak slowly and he would repeat himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So everything he said, you would immediately understand it and you would remember it from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Despite his beauty, he generally looked down alayhi salatu wasalam. Prophet sallallahu would turn to you when you would speak. The Prophet sallallahu was amazing at giving people attention. And so idhal tafata, when he turned sallallahu alayhi wasalam, he wouldn't just turn his head towards you. He would turn his entire body to you when you would speak to him sallallahu alayhi wasalam to let you know that you're the only person he's listening to at the moment. And if you asked for his ear, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam would give you his ear and he would not remove his ear until you were done with everything that you had to say. And if you shook his hand sallallahu alayhi wasalam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam would not remove his hand until you removed yours, letting you know that he was all yours when you were speaking to him sallallahu alayhi wasalam. One of my favorite narrations about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam this regard and one that has serious consequences for us in regards to our cell phones is that the Prophet ﷺ had this ring that he liked and the ring of the Prophet ﷺ was a silver ring it had a ruby stone from Abyssinia and one time the Prophet ﷺ was wearing this ring and he looked at it a few times in the middle of a conversation and then he was disappointed with himself sallallahu alayhi wasallam being distracted by his ring from his companions as they were speaking. So he actually took off his ring sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he cast it aside and he said that I was looking at this ring a few times but I wanted to get it out of the way because it was distracting me from you sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When he would point towards you alayhi salatu wasallam, he would not use a finger because if he pointed with his finger towards you, then you might feel like he's casting blame towards you. So the Prophet ﷺ would only point with his entire hand so that you didn't feel like you were being blamed by his finger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ida ta'ajjaba, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was amazed by something or when he was in the midst of something and something amusing was said, the Prophet ﷺ would tap his thigh and he would say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. When the Prophet ﷺ would walk, he was a man that would walk with a sense of purpose. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that the Prophet Sallallahu walking was like a man walking downhill. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu said you couldn't even keep pace with him. And that's because the Prophet Sallallahu had the walk of 
someone who had something important to do. He didn't walk arrogantly, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor did he walk with laziness, but he walked fast. And that was a sign that he was always motivated and he was always productive, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even in his manner of sitting, there was humility and there was an intentional humility to it. Allah sent an angel to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ask him if he wanted to live his life as Nabi and Malika or Nabi and Abda, as a prophet that lives like a king or a prophet that lives like a humble slave. And the Prophet ﷺ chose Nabi and Abda to live like a humble slave. And he said that's why he would always sit up Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and eat his food in a certain way and not recline like an arrogant man or like a wealthy man or like a king. So everything the Prophet ﷺ did with his demeanor lent itself to his supreme humility, to his modesty, to his bashfulness, to his shyness, and to his sincerity to Allah and to the people Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.